Um, welcome to the 65th edition of the Cork City Sports here at Cork ITA. Rather windy afternoon and evening expected. A little bit of rain earlier in the day. It promises to be an outstanding event though. There's a good mix of both local and international athletes. And talking of international athletes, a man who's been to three Olympic Games himself, Dick Hooper, uh, joins me. And Dick, from a, a perspective as an Irish point of view, what are we looking at as far as who we're going to look out for? Because we've obviously got Jason Smith, the Paralympian, four-time gold medalist, looking to get a qualifying time for the 100 metres. And Rob Heffernan, who was given a bronze medal for the 50-kilometre uh, walk back in London 2012, not so long ago. Yeah, I was in London that day that Rob got fourth, and it was absolutely thrilling event that day. And what a pity he didn't get the medal on the day. But this being Cork, obviously, he is the, the local hero, and it's great that he has taken time out from his training to, to go down to a distance as short as 3,000 metres and to tackle it. Uh, Alex Boyce, who trains with him, will be in the race and a couple of poles, so that's something to look forward to. Jason Smith won the 100 metres in the national championships last weekend. He's looking for a, a fast time. Hopefully the wind won't affect that too much. It is a bit blustery, certainly for sprinters, but it is warm, which helps. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing John Travers in the mile. He's up against Ryan Gregson, who's run 352. John has run 3.55 himself a couple of years ago. He's in good form. He won the Nationals last weekend as well. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing Louise Shanahan in the 800 metres against Laura Crow, local girls as well. So should uh, should be a good night's entertainment. Well, we'll see how things go. I'll let you get up to the commentary box because you're going to be a busy man this evening and he'll be up there with Will Downing. And a very good evening for the 65th Cork City Sports. And we've got a power event coming up next. The... 100 metres T44. Felix Streng, the 2014 European champion over 200 metres goes, and this a Ronald Hertog, a regular medalist in the long jump and the sprints. Levy Violet and Pepin de Groot are also in this. So away first time, brilliant start by Strang of Germany, who won all those medals in Grisetto. Hertog being left behind at the moment, and Strang from a strong club in Bayer Leverkusen will win it. Hertog in second place, Violet in third, De Groot in fourth, and 10.98, unofficial the winning time for Felix Strang. That was very, very impressive indeed, and it's only five hundredths of a second outside his lifetime best, and Ronald Hertog, Probably actually ran a lifetime best there, a PB of 11.52. Streng and Hertog. Hertog's also competing in the long jump, which is more his primary event. Streng, brilliant here. Silver in the 100 and the 200 and the long jump in the T44 at the Europeans in Grosseto. And that's a very impressive result for him indeed. In third place, representing Poland. Well, all five of the Irish team who are in the uh, European 4x100 metres relay squad for Amsterdam next week in the European Championships. They feature here. Interestingly, Ireland have four teams in the relays in the European Championships next, next week, which is, I think, a first for the country. So it's a great sign that the sprinting element of the sport is really still developing. Kira Neville, the intermediate schools champion, over 100 and 200, and the record holder as well. But Phil Healy right alongside, wearing two. I remember start of the year, uh, tying with Amy Foster, winning a semi-final in a flown at the AIT Indoor Grand Prix and ran very close in that uh, 60 final. Neve Whelan as well alongside Wearing Three, who won gold in the 200 metres and silver in the 100 at the Nationals. What a year it's been for Phil Healy already. Along with Sarah Murray, Phil Healy, Kira Neville, Joan Healy, Neve Whelan, Corian Humphreys, Catherine McManus. And away we go, the first time of asking. Phil Healy's absolutely gliding here out of lane three, but it's Joan Healy who's really going to test it. It's Phil Healy who's going to win it. Phil Healy takes it tight on the line between Kira Neville and Joan Healy. Neve Whelan actually up there as well, but it's Phil Healy who takes that in 11.53, and that was very, very comfortable indeed. That's actually tying a season's best, and it's not far outside a lifetime best of 11.49. 
Great running from Phil Healy, and she takes the honours here. Bandon AC, and it's another big result and another big win in probably the season of her life. Phil, how's that feel? It actually felt really good. I was kind of nervous coming into today because I haven't run a 100 in a few weeks because I stepped up to the 400 in the last few weeks. So to come out and jump into a 100 was good. Shorter distance, no lactic today. So I actually really enjoyed it and I really love competing here on home turf in CIT. And exciting times as well with the European Championships coming up shortly. Definitely, yeah. We fly off um, next Monday, so I'll be competing in the 4x1 and the 4x4 there. So it's really exciting to have both relays. It's a really big squad um, this year for the Irish with four relay teams going, and I don't think that's ever happened before. So it's really good, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for your time. Yeah, Phil Healy, supreme in this in the end. Joan alongside her and Kira Neville, Neil Whelan. It was a very, very strong field in this women's 100 meters. But look at that, away she went, and she wouldn't be stopped really in the end. Joan Healy coming up very well, wearing four, and it was Neve Whelan alongside, just edged out on the line, 11.53. Phil Healy winning it, Joan Healy second, Neve Whelan in third. Special guest of honour on the night, Yuri Sedek, 32 years on from his Hammer World record at this meeting. An IPC Athletics medalist from the recent Europeans in Grosseto, Orla Barry, Noah Lenhan and Eve McCarthy. Yeah, an exquisite field for this men's 100 metres. So run through the field is Peter Peeve of Bulgaria in lane one, Jonathan Brown of Great Britain in lane two, Kieran Daly of Great Britain in lane three, Jason Smith of Ireland in four, Aidan Sires of Britain in five, Ari Bragi Karrison of Iceland in lane six, Kieran Elliott of Ireland in lane seven, Christopher Saband of Ireland in eight. Yeah, here he is, Jason Smith. The Paralympic double champion over 100 and 200 metres in Beijing in 2008 and London 2012. Did the double of the World Championships in Assen in the Netherlands in 06. Again in Lyon in 2013 and just went for the 100 in Doha. Didn't compete at the Europeans in Grosseto a couple of weeks ago, but Ireland still won five medals, two of them gold. Smith fourth from the right. So away first time, excellent start by the new Irish 100 metres champion Jason Smith and he's flying at the moment alongside him, Aiden Sires is giving a real push at the moment, is Smith going to be able to hold on? I don't think he is and it's taken by Kieran Daly of Great Britain with Sires in second place and Smith looked to be in third, 10.43, very, very impressive, that's the season's best for Daly. Yeah, I suppose the fastest man in the field should win, and that's what's just happened there. It was a good race, very, very even. I, I think Jason might have even got pipped for third there, Willie. I think possibly fourth. Um, you could throw a blanket across second, third, and fourth there, but no doubt about Kieran Daly winning the race. Yeah, excellent result for Kieran Daly of Britain. 10.43, his winning time. So Jason Smith, who's uh, eased off a lot of this year, but now he's got his eyes firmly fixed on the Paralympic Games in Rio. Great starter was by Smith, but just edged out, I think, down into fourth in the end as Kieran Daly took it. I think he got out all right still. Improvements to be made, but then I felt people pressing on at me at the end, and I made the mistake of tightening up, but, you know, it, um, it happens, but it's... But it's great to be here and be here in Cork and competing and there's a great atmosphere here as well so can't complain too much. I know you're putting a lot of emphasis on that uh, Olympic qualifying time of 10 one uh, Do you feel that's maybe making you tighten up and really push a bit towards the end? Um, to be honest this year of recent I haven't really been thinking about it. Um, you know, I, I felt like I needed to be running quicker earlier in the season to be to be realistic at the 10 16. So, you know, to be honest, at this stage, in fact, I don't even have any more races left. So, I mean, it's um, unfortunately it's not going to happen, but you know, we still look forward to the Paralympics in September. Just finally, how has uh, having a, a child changed your life? Uh, in many ways, as I'm sure many people are aware. So, I mean, it's incredible to, to have um, my daughter Evie. It's, 
it changes just the way you look at things. It, it changes what's really important. And, um, you know, at the same time, it's not easy, and it's not easy to juggle. I used to get lots of sleep and have lots of time, but those days are gone. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> say, say, say hello to them at home if you want. It does get better. <laughs> it does get better, trust me. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Cheers. What a crowd we have here. Wind was point three, uh, plus three there, which means that there was a lifetime best for Ari Bragi Carson, who was looking for a new Icelandic national record there, and he did beat the 10.56 mark, which has lasted almost 20 years. But because of the wind, plus three at the backs, that means all the results get wiped out. Nikki Hamblin of New Zealand, Josephine Moultrie of Great Britain, Sarah Tracy of Ireland, Diana Martin of Spain, and Matilda Koval of Poland. There are five starters in this. Now a little bit of movement on the inside coming from Matilda Koval of Poland. It's a good, strong field that generally a lot of the steeplechasers do appear on the flat in the Irish meetings. Tracy still taking it out ahead of Koval. And third at the moment, Nikki Hamlin. The double silver at the Commonwealth Games in Delhi in 2010. But she went out in the heat of the World Championship. And now Tracy stepped back. Diana Martin of Spain from Madrid has moved up. We'll be seeing her in Rio in the red of Spain. And we've got two laps to go. Martin leads the way. Hamlin in second place. Tracy in third was burnt up a little bit. Koval in fourth. And moving back in fifth place, the Glaswegian just Joe Moultrie. Yeah, this is a crucial stage for Sarah now. She, she was in front for so long. She didn't want to be for the last 600 metres. So now the two girls have jumped her. Now, if she can stick with them and settle down, then she'll, she'll weather this storm. But right now, she's in the midst of a crisis because the two girls have passed her. They're going faster than her, and she's got to try and react. And you can see there that the gap is opening slightly. So Sarah's got to put the head down, concentrate on what's ahead of her, and hang on there. She's under a bit of pressure. Diana Martin leads for Spain ahead of Nikki Hamlin for New Zealand. And they're in a very prime position here as they come down the closing straight. Next time they come down here, they'll be heading for the bell, but it's two laps to go. It's Martin ahead of Hamlet in this women's 3,000 meters and bit of a gap is open up here. Martin leads, they go through in 6.46. Hamlet in second place. Matilda Koval of Poland in third. Sarah Tracy of Ireland in fourth, who led for a lot of this race, but maybe expended a little bit too much energy in those opening laps because the action is happening right ahead of her with Martin leading and Hamlin looking to make a little bit of a move, maybe up right alongside, and by a long way, there are one two. Yeah, Martin has a personal best of nine minutes, six seconds, which is 15 seconds slower on paper than Hamlin. So it looks inevitable what's going to happen here unless Martin has new form altogether Hamblem is sitting in there most frustratingly on the corner of, of Martin just biding her time and one suspects that when she hits the bell she's just going to take off 600 meters to go in the women's 3,000 meters two ahead of the rest Diana Marti of Spain Nikki Hamlin of New Zealand it's quite a gap they've opened up with Matilda Carvalho of Poland back in third place Sarah Tracy back and forth, another 30 metres back or so, but here they come down for the penultimate time. This for 2,600 metres, and it's Diana Martin still alongside Hamlet. They're the one two as they hit the bell, and quite a gap of around 20 metres back. Back to Hamlet in New Zealand in third place, and Tracy in fourth for Ireland. Yeah, Sarah's a little bit of drift now. She, she may have a go at third. She always finishes strong, but the real race is up front. Martin is heading down the back straight with Hamblem on her shoulder, just looking poised. But Martin has stuck in there very well. We're looking at about a winning time, I'd imagine, of nine minutes, six seconds, that kind of area, which would be equal to Martin's best. So Hamblin is well within her comfort zone. And she seems just very happy just to sit there and sit and sit. She must have every confidence in her finishing kick. Yes, she's stayed there for a long time, has Nikki Hamlet, Diana Martin there as well. Matilda Koval had stayed back alongside Tracy for a long time, but here's the kick. Here goes Hamlin now on the way to victory, surely, for New Zealand in the women's 3,000 metres. One final turn into the closing straight, and Diana Martin looks spent now, the Madrileño. It's Nikki Hamlet who's on her way to win in Cork at the CIT track for New Zealand.
the double Commonwealth Games medalist from Delhi in 2010. 907.55 she wins. Deanna Martin is in second place and it will be third for Matilda Carvalho of Poland. She opened up enough of a gap in the end for Sarah Tracy of Ireland. Back in fourth place, but it's victory for New Zealand and Nikki Hamlet. Nikki, how do you feel after that? Um, I'm pretty tired. Like, it's kind of windy out there, so um, I was just trying to sit in and use my strength, which is my kick at the end. Um, but really great meet, really good field of girls, and it's always nice to come away with a win. Obviously, you're at the Olympics in the, in the 1500 metres. Disappointment in 2012. How much are you looking forward to this year? Yeah, I mean. I, I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, this time around. I missed four years ago with injury and that was obviously quite a big hit to take. But, um, you know, i just looking forward and um, yeah, excited to go to Rio and see what I can do. Finally, you're running in the 800 as well? Yeah, I think so. My coach's idea, like, run an eight on tired legs and see how you can go. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thanks very much. Get the, get the lactic acid burn. Thank you. In <laughs> Italy. Very, very impressive, wasn't it, in the end? Carol Finn leading them round at first, the pacemaker Sarah Tracy leading for the opening few laps and having to lead because nobody else wanted to do the Spain work alongside. Matilda Koval had the opportunity to move in. But Tracy had to do all the work herself. And just look at Nikki Hamlin there, all the way through, comfortably in third with Koval behind her. And then the movement on the outside from Diana Martin. Tracy overtaking a one fell swoop, moved back to third. And then it was between Martin and Hamlin all the way through. From 800 meters to go, then the bell, and then that final brilliant break with 200 meters to go. Hamlin wouldn't be denied this time. Good victory over Diana Martin. And that's a nice win. 907.55. The winning time. But look at that lead for Alex Wright, looking very, very strong. Two laps to go in this men's 3,000 meters walk. Alex Wright, who won the national title last weekend, the defending champion here in the men's walk at the Cork City Sports, representing Leeville. It's a lead now of around 20 meters over Rob Heffernan, back in second place, the 2013 world champion. But what a battle he had in. Beijing, back in August, struggling, there had been uh, injury trouble going into it, still managed to cross the line in fifth place, very fast, searing heat, as always is the case at World Championships, and no doubt will be the case in Rio as well. How Alex shapes up in Rio is going to be very, very interesting. He's ever improving, has to iron out the technique, obviously, don't want to be picking up warnings. Looks like the right will be picking up success here, but Heffernan, that shot obviously for short and said back in second place. There's the real shot. What a gap it is. It's around 30 meters now. Yeah, Alex looks like if he can hold his form, hold his technique together, he looks like he's on his way. It, it, it's a big gap. It's not an insurmountable gap, though, and I'm pleased with Rob's form. He, he really looks good there today. As I say, he's not really as fast on paper as Alex, but he certainly has the endurance and the, and the whole toughness and, and iron that's needed for the upcoming battle in the 50K. I think Rob is in really, really good shape here, and he'll, he'll take a lot of heart from this performance tonight. Coming yes. up to the bell. Well, they both look very fit. They both look in very good form. Alex Wright will take the bell, leading for Ireland, and he'll take it inside 10 minutes, and Rob Heffernan will be as well. I'll tell you what, Rob is beginning to cut that gap back a little bit. It's certainly not the huge margin that it was 200 metres ago, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to reel Alex Wright in before the line, or will he? Third place is Gregor Sudol of Poland, but it's Wright who leads, Heffernan in second, Sudol in third, and fourth is Brendan Boyce. I don't think Rob is going to catch Alex tonight. Alex is really walking well, so is Rob. It's a good race, but it's a big gap. And over 3,000 metres, I don't think Rob has enough time to close this gap. But I have to keep reiterating, I would be very happy with the form of both men here tonight. They're showing that their training is going well. They have a good element of sharpness in their, in their walking at the moment. Their technique is good, and they're really performing well here tonight. As are the other Irish walkers, Brendan Boyce and young Keen McMenamin. Yeah, he's having a little look down at the watches, Rob. Obviously... He's got a time, which is the target for him here. 
and he's doing very well indeed. He looks comfortable, he looks very fit, but Alex Wright is the man who's got the best view of all right out in the front here, and he's going to retain his Cork title. No real doubt about it. His lifetime best is 11.19.33. He's not going to be very far off it. Rob Heavenin's coming brilliantly behind him. That's going to be the Cork one to Alex Wright of Lee Vale. Rob Heffernan took it. And Alex Wright takes it. That's going to be a lifetime best for him. 11.13.95. Rob Heffernan in second place. But no concern at all. He looks really good and in fine fettle. And in third place, it's going to be Gregor Sudol for Poland who comes through in around 11.25. Alex Wright retains his title, did it very well, but Rob Heffernan looked very well in second as well. Oh, indeed. I think Rob will be very pleased. I clocked Rob at 11.16, crossing the line there, just six seconds outside his best. For a man who's only six or seven weeks away from an Olympic 50K, uh, to, to walk that fast over such a short distance at this stage of his career is really, really encouraging. Yeah, it's, it's just a bit of fun for us. We don't usually race over 3 k so... I mean, we're, we're training very hard at the moment, so just come out here and race 3Ks, you know, just for a bit of a spectacle, so I'm very happy with it. You guys are obviously training for a much bigger distance at the moment. You say there with a shorter distance. How does that change your strategy? Uh, just that it's a m much harder, much faster, faster than we usually kind of walk. We're training very hard eh? I always knew Alex is really, really fast, so I, my, my kids were really strong. And I was hoping if I just got a bit of a sniff at the end that I would catch him. I think I came back another little bit in the last 100, but Alex is national record holder for 3K. So um, he just doesn't have the profile because he doesn't have medals, but he's a very strong athlete. And the lads behind me, I haven't beaten him this year. So no, it's a very good test. It's short, but it's, it's a good anaerobic test, you know. You were both here last year. Just tell me how important this is for you to make sure that you come back to Cork to race here. Yeah, I love it. It's so, it's so important for Cork to showcase their profile athletes. And, I'm very, I'm, I'm honoured I'm in that position because, you know, I used to come here asking Sonia O'Sullivan for her autograph and Mark Carroll and when I was a kid, Mark O'Sullivan, so for, for me to be talked as the same bread, it's a huge, huge honour for me and um, and I love it, I love the Cork City Sports and I'm going to be involved with it for many years to come. It's been a great couple of months as well, retrospectively picking up that bronze medal from 2012. Yeah, it's great, it's great for athletics in Cork and, um, you know, we're ho I'm going to have the ceremony in Cork after the Olympics and, um, It'll be a massive occasion for all the Cork and Ireland to celebrate. Like you know, it's only our fourth ever Olympic track and field medal, so it's you know it's it's another huge honour for me. So it's, it's great. Fingers crossed, you might have two to celebrate. Yeah, that's the plan. And even after today, I raced I raced a 5k two nights ago, and even off of that, I took a massive jump again tonight. So um, and I'm in the middle of big mileage. So yeah, fingers crossed, I'm going to go to Rio, and you know I'll give it everything. Best of luck to you and to Alex. So Alex Wright wins 11.13.94, Rob Heffernan 11.18.65, and Gregor Sudol third for Poland with Brendan Boyce in fourth. Thanks, Will. Sonia O'Sullivan has uh, been kind enough to join us. Sonia, you're back in the country for a couple of weeks. I am, yeah. I'm here uh, ahead of the European Championships in a couple of weeks. I'm going to be doing some commentary for RTE, so I'm looking forward to that. You must have uh, very fond memories of, of this track and, uh, and Cork in general. Um, yeah, definitely of the Cork City Sports. Um, I suppose my, my greatest memories were down in the, the Maradike track, which is now the Sonia O'Sullivan track. Uh, th this was known as the windy track out here. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I had a couple of runs out here as well. Um, but, you know, it's still the Cork City Sports, and, you know, it was great to walk in here this evening and to hear the crowd cheering. You know, it's always good to nice atmosphere here. And uh, Nick's got a few runners running in uh, tonight's events. He does. He's got um, Ryan Gregson is running in the in the mile, and uh, he's been running really well over 1500 this season. And um, Collis Birmingham and Sam McIntyre are running in the 3000 meters. So they're all hoping to be going to the Olympics in a few weeks' time. Also, tell me about this time of the year when you're building up to an Olympics from an athlete's point of view. How difficult is it, and you know, when you're trying to concentrate on these type of races, but at the same time you're looking ahead. Um, well, you, know, you you don't really look ahead. You just you, you know you kind of concentrate on what you're doing. You know each week as it comes along, and you know at the moment a lot of the European countries are kind of focused on. They have their national championships and they have the European championships coming up as well. So you know athletes from 
Australia, they have, they're kind of in no man's land, they have nothing much to do, so they're looking for races like this to kind of occupy themselves because you do, you know, you can only train so much and you need, every now and then need to check on how you're going with a few races and, you know, for um, the, the three Australian boys here tonight, for them it'll be all about racing. I, I don't think, you know, it's about fast times, they've done the fast times, so now they'll be practicing some racing skills here tonight. Well, enjoy the rest of your night and thanks for joining us. Okay, no problem, thank you. It's 800 metres, T54 men's it's wheelchair coming minutes. up next. And there's five in this. Isaac Towers of Great Britain. Gold in the 800 metres, silver in the four, bronze in the two. In Grosseto, the European Championships. Having won two medals, silver in the eight and bronze in the four in 2014 in Swansea in the Europeans. Jack Agnew as well, who won the national championships of the weekend, ahead of Isaac Towers, who was the guest athlete. Patrick Monaghan of Ireland was in third place in that. He goes in this as well having finished 23rd in the men's marathon in the World Championship last year. It was the London Marathon, though. They didn't have marathons in Doha because of the heat. So it's Isaac Towers in three, Jack Agnew in four, Will Smith in five, Patrick Monaghan in six, and Sean Frame in lane seven. And it's Agnew and Smith who are going away well. Towers, because he's a T34, he'll find a little bit of tough going very early on. It's been a very good start in lane four here by Jack Agnew of Banbridge. Northern Ireland wheelchair uh, basketball player he is in his day as well. Will Smith coming up well as well behind him. But it's Towers back in third at the moment. It's Agnew and Smith, the one two. Towers at the moment is behind Monaghan there at third and fourth but it's been a very very good start here for Jack Agnew as they jostle into position this is a, with the best T54s in the world this is very fast it's very exciting they're getting into position very well when the best of the best come against each other but it's Jack Agnew who won the national championship of the weekend leading it out of the moment ahead of Will Smith now it's really tightened up Towers ahead of Smith now in third place Wearing three, it's Patrick Monaghan. Coming up behind him is Isaac Towers. They've left Sean Frame behind at the moment, but it's still Agnew who's leading the way here with 200 metres to go. It's Agnew and Smith, the one-two. Now a little bit of movement coming up on the outside. Towers, who's had great success at major IPC athletics events in the past two, three years. He's got lots of medals to his name. Now a bit of movement coming on the uh, outside. It's good work coming from Smith. Smith who finished fifth in the 1500 metres of the Europeans in Swansea in 2014. It's Smith who hits the front ahead of Agnew. This is going to be a good win. It's Will Smith who wins it. It's second place in the end, Agnew. Will Smith wins, Agnew in second place, and it was 150 in the end that took it. In actual fact, unlike a, an 800 metre foot race, they came home faster than they went out. They went out in about 53, 54. They came home in 50, 51. And that all came down to the kick off the off the final off the final bend. It was a very fine race, very evenly matched the first four there. And Patrick Monaghan did very well as well. Yeah, it was absolutely great work, you have to say. Isaac Tars was. He finished a little bit back in there. He was trying to push up into the third place, but Will Smith making the push right towards the line ahead of Jack Agnew. And that was an excellent win for him in the end. So Will Smith wins 146.12, Jack Agnew in second place 146.35, with Isaac Tires in third 147.20. Now let's go to the women's shot put. Alana Frateroli of uh, Limerick AC representing Ireland in this competition, which is just getting underway. Claire Fitzgerald won the shot and the discus over the weekend at the national championships. And that is 10 metres, 84. Adrian Hallahan is next to throw. 10, 84 then for uh, Frateroli. Adrian Hallahan from Middleton AC. Watching this, 9 metres, 46 is Hallahan's opener. Noel Lenahan of North Cork AC. It's been... Uh, Great time in the para-athletic scene for Ireland. Noel Lennon, Orla Barry, Lee McCarthy, all winning medals in Grosseto. In the throwing events, there was no Jason Smith or Michael McKillop there, but Ireland still performed brilliantly. Eight metres, 39 for her. Laura McSweeney then. 
13 10 a lifetime best that's a really solid throw put her in a very very strong position in the early exchanges here representing Bandon AC also UCC she's a power lifter too 12 meters 73 and that puts her in pole position so Frateroli throwing again this is the next round a banning supposed to be in the uh, starting lineup but obviously evidently not throwing here now Frateroli then has a strong competition could be victory for her here 1273 is the lead of the moment for McSweeney Frateroli throwing 1084 but she's thrown 10, 12 uh, 89 in her career that's a big improvement 12 meters 20 and she stays in second place Laura McSweeney winning with a 12 meters 83 throw Alana Frateroli second 12 45 with Aideen Hallahan third McMullen leads 738 field 732 Awolo in third 686 and George Fields is next to go. So here he comes for the United States. 7.32, needs an extra six centimeters to go in front. That was a foul by uh, both David John Martin and Shane Hard, we saw, and that's a good effort out towards seven meters. As you'll see, the athletes getting ready for the next event on the track, that's the men's mile. And Ryan Gregson from Australia won the mile here at the Cork City Sports in 2012. The 1500 meters Irish national champion John Travers in this as well. Ahmed Bile of the United States, son of the 80s Somalian great, Abdi Bile. John Travers won the uh, Dublin Road Mile at Phoenix Park back in April. Great run in uh, Prague through the rounds at the Europeans last year, the athlete from the Noor Harriers, and now the national 1500 metres champion. Brett Robinson of Australia, Canberra, won the 3000 metres here last year at the Cork City Sports, alongside him Richard Weir of Great Britain, eighth in the mile in 2015. So away we go, it's Gregson, Travers, Belay, Hurst, Green, Weir, Robinson, Flynn, Saisman, Ashcraft, Krauchik and Cronin. They're the 12 in this, Dean Cronin's our pacemaker and he sets out straight away in the green singlet. Yes, we're here in the mile and Cork loves its mile. It's been uh, on the go since way back in the 70s. John Hartnett, once upon a time when the Cork City Sports was run on grass in the Mardike, ran 356.3 and electrified the world. It was a world leading mark at that time. Since then, we've had the likes of Sydney Marie, Steve Ovet, Cork's Marcus O'Sullivan, Mark Carroll, John Walker, Eamon Coughlin, Ray Flynn, all gracing this stage. Tonight we have Ryan Gregson from Australia, 352 miler, up against the national 1500 metre champion of Ireland, John Travers, and a host of other sub four minute milers. Well, Dean Cronin bringing them around, and just you would have seen that brilliant surge in the back straight with about 200 metres gone by Ahmed Bile of the United States to move up. And now alongside him is Richard Weir, wearing one Ryan Gregson of Australia, 352. Lifetime best 352.24, and this season he's run 352.59. His best 1500 meters in four years. They're really being spread out. Dean Cronin is running a very fast pace. It is a good lead at the moment being set here by Richard Weir in the white for Derby. Eighth in last year's mile, but still quite a distance to go but there's uh, around 40 meters from first to 12th at the moment it has to be said that Dean Cronin is doing a really good job he's stringing them out he's running fast and Ryan Gregson would need to get himself together there he's at the back of the field with his compatriot he'd need to start moving up John Travers is ahead of them John is in a good position and John's problem has always been concentration John ran 3.55 in the Morton Mile a couple of years ago. He electrified the Dublin crowd. Can he electrify the Cork crowd here tonight and give us an Irish victory? He certainly has the form, but Ryan Gregson is two behind him, tracking him carefully. He obviously views him as the man to beat. Where Gregson, Bile, Krauchik behind the pacemaker, Dean Cronin at the moment. He went up quite early, Richard Weir, after Ahmed Bile made that surge away without our pacemaker, Bile currently in third place. We're holding on quite well for Great Britain at the moment, but Ryan Gregson has been up at the four all the way through. Also in a good position in sixth place is John Ashcroft. John Travers is uh, tucked in, you'll see, around sixth or seventh place. And Brett Robinson wearing a, 
actually an identical singlet right behind him as well. Pacemaker's done his job. It's Richard Weir who takes it up. Gregson is in second place. Belay's in third. And in fourth is Simon Krajcek of Poland. They send a very good team here. And moving on the outside now is John Travis. Unfortunately, the pace has slowed a little bit and we'll do well to get a sub four minute mile unless we are going to get a fast lap. How fast, we don't know. John Travers is in a good position now. I suspect he's going to make a move. He's going to have to make a move if he's to beat someone as good as Ryan Gregson. The big two are at the front as we take the bell in 3.05. It's Gregson who leaves. It's Travers in second place. Bile is up there. They're the leading three at the moment. Also trying to make a move on the outside. He hasn't gone away. The pole, Stephen Krajcik. Now they're really beginning to wind it up with 300 remaining. Now can Travers make a little bit of move on the outside? The pace is really quick in here. It's Ryan Gregson leading for Australia. Bile staying in third place. Krajcik in fourth. But Gregson still is defending his line very well. Travers has to go sometime. He's looking to put the foot down with 200 to go. And on the inside, it's Bile who takes second place. Travers has moved back down to third. And Gregson's pulling away. Bile's trying to go with it. It's Travers back in third. Really good pace being shown by these two. It's Ryan Gregson coming through for Australia. Bile, can he reel him in? Philip Sesselman of Britain's moving up into third place. Travers down in fourth. Gregson's going to come through to win ahead of Bile. And it's 401 38. Sesselman in third. Travers in fourth. And it was Brett Robinson in fifth. That ended up being a very good race. Not a fast one, but a very good competitive one nonetheless. Good race from a competitive point of view. Anti-climax from a, a time point of view. It was too slow on the lap. The time disappeared. Third lap then, 3.05 at the, at the bell. Wasn't fast enough to bring that sub four mile. Yeah, good win by Ryan Gregson. 401.38, he takes the acclaim of the Coxony crowd. Just a shame from Travers' point of view in the end as he was trying to push up, take the honours that he uh, moved back in the end down into fourth place. Brilliant crowd, full stand here at the CIT track. As usual, nice smattering of fans around the arena as well. Well, John Travers won the national championship on Sunday and he always had a huge amount of home support here away they went and just in the end Travers held on quite well Bile made a very good early move here impressively so kept a good momentum behind the uh, pacemaker Dean Cronin then a little bit of a move up by Richard Weary stayed there for a couple of laps Ryan Gregson was never going to go away Bile stayed up with him yeah Ryan is the class of the field he's a 352 miler he obviously was happy with his speed and his training and he was he was possibly using this as a tactical type of race to see how he could react and how fast he could run a, a last lap off a relatively slow pace. 3.05 at the bell is too slow if you want to run a sub four minute mile. And from that perspective, they left themselves with a lot to do. But you can see even the gaps he opened over the last 200 meters show that he's in good nick and he's a man to watch when you get to Rio. He certainly looks like a semi-finalist stroke finalist in Rio. Ryan Gregson gets the win in the men's mile. 4.01.37 the winning time. Bile in second, 4.02.15 with Sesamin in third, Travers fourth and Robinson came through in fifth place. We're in sixth. Five going this. Nikki Hamblin is back again for New Zealand. Laura Crow, great competitor, along with Fiona Kuho, Michaela Nunu of Romania, the Stout Bucharest Club. Good to see Laura Crow here today. She's been rather quiet this season so far. Laura always uh, gives value for money. And I'd expect a good run from her here tonight. So underway in the women's 800 metres, it's Hamblin in New Zealand, Crow of Ireland, Caho of Ireland, Nunu of Romania and Ware of Great Britain. And Laura Crow, well, it's been very gratifying to see her competing in the likes of the Diamond League in Oslo in the past few years. Has been quiet the last uh, couple of seasons, a little bit of injury as well along the way. She's taken the front, Nunu, in second place for Romania, Fiona Keho, the national uh, indoor champion, the bronze medal 2015 in the 800 metres behind Kira Everard and Ashlyn Cross. It was Wexford's only medal actually in the national indoors last year. From Kilmore, she lies in third place at the moment. Hamblin and Ware back in fourth and fifth at the moment. 
How about this for a lead for Laura Crow? Trying to get a big result here for Ireland. And maybe a good time as well, as season's best is 2.04.09. It would be very, very profitable for her. Nunu's in second place at the moment. It's uh, Caho in third, Hamblin in fourth, and Weir in fifth. And she storms through the bell in around a minute. You have to hand it to Laura. She's done exactly what she should have done because Hamblin is bound to be tired after 3,000 metres. Laura's with a, hit her with a stormer of a first lap. You can see that Hamblin is struggling there. She may work her way up to second off sheer strength but it, she'll do well to catch Laura. Yeah, flying at the moment. Look at the lead for Laura Crow. Around 40 metres at the moment with Nunu back, way back in second place. Fiona Cahoe working hard to defend third place behind Nikki Hamlin at the moment. It would have been quite a double if she'd been able to do that. 3,800 in the same night. But as the rain begins to pitter down here in Cork, in West Cork City, what a lead. Brilliant lead for Laura Crow. But it's being reeled down quickly. By Nunu. She's got Can 100 she metres. On? Does she know that she's coming? Does she know that the lead is being whittled down stride by stride? She put a huge amount into this Crow. She's holding off Nunu. It's quite a finish. Crow's dying, but she's going to win it. 2.05.76. Oh, she had to really dig into the well for that. Laura Crow wins it with Michaela Nunu in second place for Romania. And Fiona Caho did indeed come through. I think she took third place ahead of Hamlin, but wow, she really had to fight hard and defend that well. Oh, that's a great victory. It has to be one of the most significant victories of her career here on home soil. Total courage, total conviction, total... She just gave herself totally in that race and it's absolutely magnificent. I'm delighted for her. And that was just sensational. Well, not a quiet season for her anymore. What a brilliant lead that was for her. That she opened up over Nunu. Around 30, 40 metres. Looked as if she was going to maintain it. And then Nunu just fought back brilliantly. Crow beginning to tie up in the final 200 metres, particularly in the final 50 metres of the race. Fighting hard all the time to try and keep up was Nunu. But Crow held on just, only just. She had the windy all night, but I enjoyed that now. First time winner of that, so I'm It's all of a sudden, the conditions all of a sudden changed just before the race. How much more difficult did that make it coming down the home straight? Do you know what? We're used to training in this all the time, so I have no excuses. I just have to fight through it all the time, so we're well used to it. So. Interesting year, this one, obviously being an, an Olympic year. How do you feel this year's planning out for you so far? Not too bad. I normally do a big, big winter, so I think it takes a, it's a time, or it's time to actually peak. So. I have another race now on Thursday night in Barcelona, so hopefully I can go well there with a bit of heat <laughs> on my bones. And a bit of rest as well. Congratulations. Well, well done. Thank you. So Laura Crow wins the 800 metres, 205.73, only just for Michaela Nunu in second place, 206.06, with Nikki Hamlin of New Zealand in third. Laura's run could end up in the story of the night. Lots of successful athletes from the weekend national championships. Kieran Kelly finished fourth in the 800 of the Nationals. Carl Griffin was third. Mussin Saituni represents Qatar. Onavarad second in the Nationals. Niall Tui was sixth. James Leddingham, who's on pace duty here, was in eighth place. Yeah, fabulous field here, and there's 14 in this 800 metres. This will be fabulous to see what they're going to do in the first uh, 100 metres of the bend, especially at the break. Lots of nationalities represented here as well. Mexico, Great Britain, Greece, Ireland, Australia, Qatar, Morocco. And Bermuda as well. It's uh, James Leddingham, who's uh, Westwater at AC. He's our uh, pace man at the moment. He does a lot of these pacing duties in the uh, big events. Coming through around in the green, it's Barlow of Germany who's up there as well, but we're expecting a lot from the Irish here. Yeah, and it's fast from the word go. They've gone through a, a 200 metres in just over 24 seconds. Niall Tui has really committed to the pace here, and everybody is more or less engaged at this stage. Because it's so fast, they're well stretched out, which has eliminated the issue of falling and, and bumping and boring. But James Lettingham is doing a really good job here in front, and he's going to bring them through. 
in just over 50 seconds. 51 seconds, the main group going through 52, 53. Yeah, here Paris on Kelly Owen Everard, well placed. Also up there, Aaron Evans of Bermuda and it's Perisica of Mexico is also flying well. It was a very good pacing job that was done there as the sun comes out again here in course. It's a very good run by Aaron Evans of Bermuda at the moment. But just look at how things are pacing up over on the far side. A good little bit of pace by uh, Tui on the outside in the fluorescent yellow. It's Aaron Evans who leads for Bermuda at the moment. But now the fight back coming by Ireland's Nile Tui from Ferry Bank AC. And inside, uh, wearing one is Luke Matthews as well of Australia. The fastest home performance by an Australian in 34 years when he took on Radisha earlier this year. Now it's really tightening up over on the final bend. Here's a great break being led by Luke Matthews, leading them home, Matthews. Barrel of Germany is in second place. Matthews taking them home, and in second is going to be James Bowness, and third will be Barrel Great running. Fourth was Elliot Slade of Wales, and fifth to me looked to be James Bowness of Great Britain. That was very tight along the way. That was a very good performance. Good win. That was a fiercely competitive race. Uh, with about two seconds stretching, the, the entire field there was, was within that two seconds. First of the Irish was Kieran Kelly, just over 149. Really good race, Owen Everard ran well, so I think everybody got what they were looking for there, a good competitive outing. Yeah, brilliant result, 148.12 in the end for Luke uh, Matthews. Aaron Evans was leading the way for most of it. Three seconds outside, the lifetime best set this year by Luke Matthews, the Australian national champion. And uh, while well, there was no carnage, thankfully, they were well led out by James Lettingham, the pace man. Luke Matthews wins 148.11, James Barnes in second, 148.33, with Barla in third, Slade in fourth, Kieran Kelly, Owen Everard, Carl Griffin, fifth, sixth and seventh for Ireland. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad, I didn't feel all that great, so... I just tried to get cover for about 600 and then I saw that guy from Bermuda who was getting a bit ahead so I just thought, oh, better close that and then try to just finish the last 100 as best as possible but I don't know, watching that replay, I didn't look all that great, it looked like I was reaching a bit so I just need to, I need to get a bit fitter. But um, no, that was good, I'll take the win. What do you think you have to do then to catch the likes of uh, David Radisha? Uh, Besides running faster. <laughs> uh, for me, just get a lot fitter. I still got another six or seven weeks or whatever it is until the game. So get fitter, get a get my body used to running 144, 145. Haven't run 145 since Australia, so I need to get back to that shape and then have some luck. <laughs> I know we we're just talking about it uh, before that, but um, what's up? What's up next as you lead into the Olympics? Um, just got a training block now for about three, three, two and a half weeks or so. Um, after that. Might be doing Gothenburg Grand Prix, so I'll do a 1K up there, just a bit of work on my fitness a bit, and then after that, go up to altitude in America, and then go down to South America for the for that small little games just down there. Nah, yeah, go down to South America for the um, for Rio, and then you know, try to take on Radisha, but it'll be tough. But nobody's hit the same marks, hit the same uh, lengths really as Adam McMullen and George Fields from that first round, 7:38 and 7:32 respectively. And here comes Fields now. The man lying in second place, a foul in his third round. And Fields met the board well, and that's another good solid seven meter effort. But I don't think it's going to be an improvement. It's not really close to a 7.32. Went out to 7.26 in the second round. And the foul in uh, no jump in round three. Needs six more centimetres to overtake Adam McMullen. He's six centimetres behind McMullen. Here is our leader then for Ireland. Adam McMullen, the national champion from Crusaders AC. 7.84 is lifetime best set this year. So here he is, a man that uh, many will be interested in. 
the national champion Adam McMullen, 7.38 in the opening round. George Fields with our fourth attempt a few moments ago, 7.25. He's been very close to McMullen, who knows there's pressure on him. If he gets the win here, it will be a brilliant achievement. Can he improve on his 7.38 from the opening round? He met the board really well. He's well beyond seven metres again. 7.02 in the third round and no jump in the second. Launched himself in well. They're getting into position for the 200 metres. We'll give you his result shortly. Really jumping well. So here we go, it's Elliott, Adam Manning, Brown and Pave, men's 200 metres. Elliott, Brown and Pave went in the 100 earlier. So they're away at the second time of Askew. It's a very good start by the Bulgarian from Sofia, Pave, and also Brown beginning to move well in lane five. Here comes a Manning now. Pave doing his best to defend his position. But it's going to be a solid win here for the man wearing five. And Amanning did take it. Amanning did take it ahead of Karrison. Amanning did fight back very well ahead of the Icelander. Right at the death. And he gets the win. 21-28. The winning time. Very close to his season's best of 21-24. Karrison just edged out of that in the end. I think Karrison will be happy with his run, though. He possibly would have got a personal best there tonight. And on top of his great victory by his countrymen last night it's been a good week for the Icelanders <laughs> definitely is just as that I think he was but uh, Peter Pave had got off to a brilliant start for Bulgaria in lane six and going well too was Jonathan Brown of Great Britain this was the stage where Carson was beginning to move up but a Manning he just edged it for me not by much only by one or two hundredths but it's Edmund Anna Manning who just takes it ahead of Karras. Ezekiel Awolo of Nigeria. Coming up uh, next for Nigeria. Lying in uh, third place with 7 metres 30 in the second round. He replicated that in the fourth. the board well that'll be a white flag he used the board really well indeed now that's beyond seven meters George Fields penultimate attempt for the United States 732 in the opening round he's seen Adam McMullen increase that lead massively on him to 23 centimeters it was 733 for Ezekiel Luwulo so he goes second a centimeter now ahead of Fields time for him to fight back Met the board well, he went uh, well out towards the left of, he'd have seen it. Great support from the crowd. Adam McMullen for Crusaders and for Ireland. A solid lead with that 7.55 in the previous round. Lifetime best set this year, 7.84, and he's gone out to a nice distance again, around seven and a half metres. Men's 3,000 metres coming up next. Big field of 17 in this. Collis Birmingham, who's won twice here at the Cork City Sports and who's uh, won up in the Mary Peters up in Belfast as well. Jack O'Leary is running very fine race down the course for a junior. He's running really well. And this is a really good race, well committed. And Collis Birmingham taking it out. There are two laps, just under two laps to go. Planes flying over from nearby Cork Airport as they take off. And will it be lift off for Collis Birmingham or Reed Buchanan here? They're the one too. They've opened up a good lead, you'll see, of around 15 metres or so, ahead of Eric Speakman in third place. Still trying to keep up pace for Australia's Sam McEntee in fourth, but they really are massively stretched out at the moment. It's Collis Birmingham and it's Reed Buchanan. A big gap between first and second, then back to third and fourth. And it's uh, still trying to maintain the position at the moment. Sam McEntee is up there with Eric Speakman. But these are our two leaders and they're looking good as they make the turn into the final bend for the penultimate time.
Yeah, one lap, at the, one lap to go shortly, and Birmingham is put, having it put up to him by Buchanan. On paper, he's 19 seconds faster than him, but at the bell, there's nothing between them, and Buchanan looks poised. Be interesting to see what Birmingham has down the straight. He will be acutely conscious that Buchanan is, is in there behind him. He probably doesn't know a lot about him, probably doesn't know is he capable of a kick, and Birmingham, I would, su I would suggest, is under pressure. It's Birmingham and Buchanan who are jousting between the two here. Battle for third between Sam McEntee and Eric Speakman. But it's Collis Birmingham who leads here with 200 metres to go in the men's 3,000 metres. It really is very tight. Collis Birmingham leading the way ahead of Reeves Buchanan. This is a very, very good contest. They've recruited very well for this race. They look as if they'll break eight minutes. But will Birmingham beat Buchanan for once and for all here? Buchanan trying to come on the outside for the United States. Buchanan's coming to try and beat Collis Birmingham. And Buchanan's on the way to get the win. It's Reed Buchanan in the USA. Fifth in the NCAA, 10,000 metres this year. 29-14, he wins. Collis Birmingham is in second place. And third will be Eric Speakman. And fourth in the end was Sam McEntee. But it's Reed Buchanan who gets the success, gets the win. He did very well. Seven great race that was. Oh, that was a great race. Buchanan got a personal best out of that, so he's going to be thrilled. I think Birmingham maybe underestimated him, waited too long, didn't realise how good he was, and he just couldn't hold off the sheer pace of, of Buchanan in the, in the home straight. Good run, though. They really wound it up near the end to get down to that time of 7.52 because with two laps to go, they were looking at about just marginally under seven, under eight minutes. So to get down to 7.52 means they ran that last lap extremely fast, probably 56, 57 seconds. That was a really good race. 3,000 metres is a perfect race for a meeting like this. It's long enough to keep you interested and not too long to make you bored. So Reed Buchanan wins the men's 3,000 metres, 752.49, ahead of Collis Birmingham of Australia in second, and Eric Speakman of New Zealand third, with Sam McEntee fourth, and Matt Bergen, the best of the Irish. He was fifth. So Dan Finity of Nina is in lane three, owned par of St. Joseph's Kilkenny in lane four. Dimit Clancy of Abbey Striders in five. Oshin Fitzpatrick, Nina in six, and Ray Walsh of Abbey Striders is in lane seven so targeting the world juniors in Bidgosh at the uh, Krakosiak Stadium 19th to the 24th of July 53-20 required so we're away Finity in three Parr in four Clancy in five as Patrick in six and Ray Walsh in lane seven in this men's 400 hurdles Ashi Fitzpatrick remember is the senior to make a bit of competition of this. He's got away very well on Fitzpatrick and David Clancy as well. They're going well in lane six and seven at the moment. And Ray Walsh tying up in lane seven and he's pulled out for uh, Abby Strider. So he's gone at the moment and we're uh, down to three then. Yeah, we're down to three because I think, yes, yeah, somebody else has gone. So now we're only down to the final three. It's own par in the lead, ahead of Dear McClancy. It's Dan Finity up there as well. Oshin Fitzpatrick and Way Walsh find it far too tight, and uh, so too is Clancy. He's struggling. So it's own par who comes through, and own par is going to get the win ahead of Dan Finity, and the time will be 55.80, and it's outside that World Juniors target of 53.20. Well, that was uh, good win in the end for own par, but basically three of those five found the going very tough in the end. But yeah, it was extraordinary as Fitzpatrick and Walsh over on the far side succumbed very early. And just look at Dear McClancy. Yeah, that's where the wobble happened and he was out of the equation there. Dan Finity taking it up with own par. Finity clattered the hurdle. Power, who finished eighth in the senior nationals. 55-59, by the way. 48 hours ago, 55.80, unofficial his winning time here. A run through some of the other races on the bill. Louise Shanahan claiming the junior women's 800 meters for Lee Bell. She's going to do it. It'll be Rose Finnegan in third for Bohemian, but it's a home win for Louise Shanahan. She wins it. Emma O'Brien in second place. A big success for clubmate Charlie O'Donovan in the men's junior 1500 meters. Charlie O'Donovan is going to get the victory for Lee Vale and it'll be a good victory too. 354 37. 
victory for Stuart Maloney of Moore Abbey Milers in the Open Men's 3000 metres and more Irish success in the women's hurdles. 100 hurdles and it's Moreland in three, Bennett four, Turner five, Taylor in lane six. And it's a great start this. Moreland's gonna come through and that's a good victory in the end in this women's 100 meters hurdles. Well, thanks, Will. Dick Hooper is uh, hot foot down here from the uh, commentary box. And Dick, it was certainly an outstanding night. The weather held for us and there were some really good performances. Yeah, I thought it was a really good meet. Um, some really good performances. For me, the highlight of the night was Laura Crow winning the 800 meter women's. I was just delighted to see her back. She's been quiet this year. And she ran such an intelligent race because the New Zealand girl had won the 3,000 metres earlier. She was bound to be tired. So if you think, that's the thing to do. Hit her hard from the word go. And Laura, superb run. The mile, I suppose, because we didn't get the sub four, we're always a little bit disappointed. But it was a very competitive race. And Ryan Gregson showed his class. The 3,000 metres was a good finish, good good, uh, good competitive race there as well. And uh, overall, very good meet. A word on Jason Smith and the 100. It did tighten up a bit towards the end there. Yeah, but it was a really strong 100 metre field and uh, equally the 200 metres was a really good race with two personal bests, I think, in first and second place. So, yeah, People might have said that we had a, a, a weakened field compared to other years, but I, I thought they certainly lived up to the standards tonight and it's been as good as any other year. Look, the strength of the fields doesn't matter as long as there's enough people there and you get competition. And that's what we got tonight. We got really competitive races right down, right up from the 100 metres up to the 3,000. There was good depth in there, people competing and competition is what it's about let's forget about this uh, incessancy with with times all the time let's have good competition let the crowd go home happy and the Irish athletes who are on their way to the European Championships there was some good performances put in tonight yeah on Everard ran a good 800 meters um, and he'll be happy with that because he's going in the 1500 meters the the women's sprint team they got a good workout and it was great to see them all just willing to compete against each other so oh loads of positivity to take away from for the long drive home <laughs> Dick, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for your company. Thanks for your company at home for watching. Don't forget, in a few weeks' time, it's the Morton Games up in Santry in Dublin. That's something to look forward to. But for myself, Dick Hooper and Will Downing, until next time, it's bye for now. Bye-bye.